you to come before the Lord wherever you are come to him in an attitude of reverence and fear and knowledge of the Lord let us come before him and sing our praises to him show our gratitude to him tell him how great he is how great you are Lord us, Lord, even as we turn to you, respond to us, Lord, as we open up to you. Show us your face, Lord. Show me your face, Lord. Show me your hands to you, we give you the praise and we give you the honour, and we lift our voice to you, we lift our heart to you, let it be pleasing, let it be a sweet incense unto you, let us worship you in spirit and in truth, let our hearts be clean, let our minds be clear, let our mouth speak good things of you. Let our mouth praise you. Your praise will be forever on our lips, O Lord. Let it be. Let it be. In the name of Jesus. Can I encourage you, wherever you are, to start to come to Him, start to praise the Lord, let Him know that He is good, reflect on the good things He has done for you, and as it rises up, let the praise come out from your mouth. 
Let us praise Him together. Let us lift Him up with our voices. Praise is rising. together in one heart and one mind and in one spirit to lift each other up to love one another 
to show each other the love of Christ. We commit ourselves to you, O Lord. We say, O Jesus, that you are sovereign and you are almighty above everything. Over our hurts and our pains, over our own desires, over our earthly bodies, O Jesus, you are in control of everything.
Good morning, a blessed Sunday to each one of you. I would like to start by asking you a riddle. Why are Saturdays and Sundays strong days? Because the rest are weekdays. <laughs> I hope you like that. This is the 10th Sunday that we have not physically met in church. I miss my strong day, my Sunday. It is the day that I enjoy praying, worshipping God, and fellowshipping with my brothers and sisters in church. The pandemic has changed the shape of the church. It has now become more rectangle. Why? Because we meet on screen through our computers, laptops, or mobile phones. In TOD, we meet online for care groups, for children church, for Sunday service, committee meetings, and Sunday catch-up. Now, more than ever, we need to embrace and live out the we core value of our church. We, we are a relational church connected to Christ as the head and to one another as the body of Christ for growth. To rise above these challenging times, it is crucial for us to stay connected to Christ through our vertical, personal relationship and faith in Him. It is also equally important to stay connected horizontally in our relationship to one another as the body of Christ. We are a relational church. To be relational, we need to be intentional. Some of you don't like to meet on Zoom, but you make an effort to join the groups for the sake of connecting with one another. Thank you so much for doing that. For those who are yet to get connected, join us for the Sunday catch-up after service today. Throughout the lockdown, the church board has also met frequently on video calls to discuss and decide on matters related to church. During one board meeting, Pastor Jason gave us some exhortation. And then he asked us to share two things about each other. First, we are to share what is the one thing that makes the team by this person. Secondly, we are to share what is the one thing that hurts the team by this person. Which question is easier to answer? Of course, the positive one. It is more challenging to tell another person 
in the face you know, on their negative aspect. What is the purpose of this exercise? The leadership would like to create a culture of openness and encouragement and it starts with us. We would like to see this culture translated to the church as a whole. This pattern or culture is modeled by Jesus in Revelation. Revelation 2.1 To the angel of the church in Ephesus write, These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. This particular letter was specifically addressed to the church in Ephesus. Jesus was intentional. He thought of who and what he wanted to say. Growing up, my parents were zookeeper of 10 kids. My mom's system of correction is when one child disobeyed, all get caned. Jesus was specific and not weak or general when addressing the church. Jesus was personal and relational. The lampstand represents the seven churches. He walks among us. He is near us. He makes himself known. Revelation 2, 2-3 I know your deeds, your hard work and your perseverance. You have persevered and have endured hardships for my name and have not grown weary. Jesus encouraged and gave specific commendations of the good things he saw in the church of Ephesus and the other churches. He said, I know your deeds. Last week, I sent a text message to Eileen to wish her Teacher's Day. Most of you don't know, but I know what she has done for my son Evan when he was a toddler. She initiated the toddler's group and will often use her own money to buy extra books and supplies. She prepared quality lessons for the children. Sometimes, even if my son is the only student, she will still go ahead and teach him. This good deed of hers is still etched in my heart. Likewise, for each one of you who have been laboring and toiling for God, Others may not see or recognize, but God knows and God appreciates you. We appreciate you. Many of us are brought up in Asian culture where encouragement is not practiced. Instead of being stingy or fearful, let us be generous in giving commendations where it is due. If someone is doing a good job, tell them. Go beyond a thumbs up. Be specific how they are doing well, so they can keep on improving. Revelation 2, 4 to 5 Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. Jesus pointed out to the church the specific areas they were failing and also helped them to see what they can do to rectify the situation. He told them what they needed to do. They needed to repent and return to their first love. During MCO, I took a Hebrew course. The teachers were very encouraging when they marked my papers. They told me my handwriting was very neat and that I paid attention to details. But They also pointed out my mistakes. They showed and corrected the specific places that I got things wrong. If they don't, I will continue to do the same mistakes over and over again. We have blind spots in our lives. Thank God for people who cared enough to lovingly point things out to us. What can we learn from the letters to the seven churches? Our Lord corrected but he also commanded he does so personally through relationship making himself known he does it thoughtfully specifically with the intention of building his church proverbs 27 17 iron is sharpened by iron 
one person sharpens another. The picture that immediately pops to my mind is the butcher in my hometown. He will wield his cleaver and he will begin to sharpen it. And I will watch how he will skillfully and efficiently cut the meat. In what ways do people sharpen each other? Number one, by exchanging information. We don't know everything and we can learn from each other. The young people are very tech savvy and the older ones are learning from them. The older ones can share their experiences and knowledge acquired through the years. Number two, by discussing issues so that there will be clarity. Number three, by critiquing each other's ideas, this will help us to get a good or the best solutions. Number four, by knowing that different people can bring different perspectives and strengths to a discussion. It is so wonderful, isn't it? When the body of Christ bring in their strength in different areas and it becomes a, such a wonderful time of working together when this happens. Number five, by giving permission to speak truth into each other's life. Not only the things that we want to hear. Number six, by showing appreciation when others offer constructive criticism. Tell them thank you for the feedback and for helping me improve. This will in turn give them permission to continue to speak into our lives. Like a knife blade rubbed against the steel, sparks may fly when iron sharpens iron. We know that constructive criticism and corrections are good, but we hesitate. Why? Because we are afraid of the sparks. We are afraid that it will affect our relationships. We might lose a friend or an employee when things go sour. Or we don't want others to feel bad. Or we don't want to lose favor with others. The fact is, Proverbs 12, 18 says, sharp words cut like a sword. That's why we are so afraid of the sparks. How many can relate to the picture on the screen? We have each received our share of cutting words and also we have given a fair share of the same to others. When Proverbs was written, guns don't exist, sharp words can be like a bullet that can penetrate deep into our hearts, bringing great discouragement. Last week, Elder James shared that we have been given a ministry of reconciliation, not condemnation. Indeed, sparks may fly when iron sharpens iron. So, what must we do? In order to build a culture of openness and encouragement, let us look at biblical patterns and see what the scriptures say. Let us ask ourselves, what are the right attitudes that we should have towards corrections? Proverbs 28, 23. He who rebukes a man will find more favor afterward than he who flatters with the tongue. We dare not correct others for fear of losing favor with them. But scripture tells us that we will find favor if we tell them the truth. One day, after I shared a sermon in church, a brother texted me. He told me the message was good, but he highlighted to me that one of my contents may be perceived as racism. I was very thankful that he took the courage, the time to tell me so that I don't repeat the same mistake again. I respected him for that and I appreciated him. Psalm 141 verse 5 Let the godly strike me, it will be a kindness. If they correct me, it is soothing medicine. Don't let me refuse it. King David sees the correction or rebuke of the godly as kindness and welcomes it like a soothing medicine. I would like to compare commendations as smarty chocolate and correction to a bitter pill. 
Smarties are sweet and pleasant to eat. We can eat a lot of it. But bitter pills, not so easy. And when we are sick, what do we need? We don't need Smarties. We need the bitter pill. Proverbs 9.8 says, Do not correct those who make fun of wisdom, or they will hate you. But correct the wise, and they will love you. Mockers are people who reject wisdom and truth. If we have this attitude, people do not want to waste their time correcting us. Proverbs 12.18 Sharp words cut like a sword, but words of wisdom heal. Proverbs 27.6 Wounds from a friend are better than kisses from an enemy. Kisses of an enemy can come in the form of flattery. It is meant to inflate the ego, but it is not the truth that can help us to grow or to become a better person. Wounds from a friend do not mean we have to be brutal in our corrections. Often, we need to do it privately instead of publicly in front of everybody else. From my observation, when it comes to openness of speech, the older generation are less vocal, while the younger generation are more vocal. A surgeon needs to cut in order to heal. I feel the pain when I receive corrections or rebukes, just like the cut by the surgeon is painful. But when I swallow my pride, I can bear that cut because I know it is good for me. Words of wisdom heal. They are words that can sometimes cut, but it is exactly what we need for our specific situation. Whether we are young or old, let's gain wisdom to share words that heal and build like a surgeon. Proverbs 25, 12, the right word at the right time, it's like a custom-made piece of jewellery. And a wise friend's timely reprimand is like a gold ring slip on your finger. A jeweller deals with precious stones and precious metals. He skillfully puts a jewel in the right setting. Just as a jeweller, wise people custom-make the right words to speak at the right time to the right person. I really appreciate it when people take time to craft their words and once it is spoken, the hearers receive something of value like a gold ring slip on the finger. Another version of the same verse says, To an attentive ear, constructive criticism from a truly wise person is like an earring or jewellery made of fine gold. We can miss a timely advice or correction if we do not have an attentive year, a year that is ready to learn and to receive. The letter to the seven churches ends with this statement, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. God can speak to us through people and to people. Let us perk up our ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to us or through us. Let us give godly, wise and caring counsel to others. Let me summarize quickly this portion before I move on. We have learned that number one, corrections can bring favour with others. You can be trusted because you are not a yes person. And People know that you will give an honest opinion. Number two, a loving rebuke is like soothing medicine, although it's like a bitter pill to swallow. Number three, words of wisdom brings healing. A surgeon needs to wound in order to heal. Number four, like a jeweler, we add value to people through choice words at the right time. Number five, having a listening ear and a teachable heart are crucial to receive and to give constructive criticism. Since we are handling such 
precious commodities. How should we do it? Our Christian Education Department will be starting a basic Hebrew course in June. You will learn that Pei is the 17th letter of the Hebrew alphabet. The word Pei means mouth and words are an extension of the mouth. Words have the power to destroy or to build. Words have the power to wound or to heal. Pei follows the letter Ayin, which means I. We use our eyes to see, and when we see, we understand. The sequence of the letter suggests to us the priority of seeing before speaking. Proverbs 10.19 In the multitude of words, sin is not lacking, but he who restrains his lips is wise. A wise person is swift to observe and then offer an opinion about something. Ephesians 4, 29 Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. Just as tiny droplets of saliva spread into the air when people speak may be sufficient to spread coronavirus, let us be quick to hear, swift to see, slow to speak, so that we can stop the spread of corona carelessness. Psalm 107 verses 35 to 36 But he also can turn a barren wilderness into an oasis with water. He can make springs flow into desert lands and turn them into fertile valleys so that cities spring up and he gives it all to those who are hungry. An oasis is an unexpected fertile area in the desert where water is found and plants grow. It is because it draws from an underground water source. King David knows how to strengthen himself in the Lord. He knows how to worship God in good times. And he knows how to worship God in times that are challenging. He constantly strengthens himself in the Lord. He draws from God in challenging times. Just like the oasis, God must be our main source of strength and encouragement to bring us through all seasons of life. He offers us commendations, but also corrections. And He does so through the Word of God, through the prompting of the Holy Spirit. As long as we stay hungry and stay connected to Him, He will be the constant source that will water us. Receiving from other wise and godly people will be an added bonus on top of the resources that we draw from God. When we draw from a reliable and constant source, we not only water ourselves, but we can be an oasis to others. An oasis is a place where a weary traveller can find refreshment. They can refill their drink and replenish their food before they move on with their journey. Let us be an oasis, bringing the life-giving Word of God to the thirsty, the hungry, the wounded, and those in need of healing. In summary, number one, be intentional to be relational, especially in this season where we still need to practice social distancing. Be intentional by calling someone, texting someone, and let us continue to stay in touch with one another. Number two, build a culture of openness and encouragement. Both commendations and corrections are equally important and equally necessary. This applies not only to church, but in every area of our lives. Number three, see before we speak. MCO is a stressful time for each one of us. Some are dealing with work, family or personal issues. 
Let us be kind to one another. We are not able to communicate in person. We rely on WhatsApp and other video platforms so that we can continue to stay connected. And sometimes using these platforms can be frustrating due to internet connection and stuff like that. And it can also be funny. We are constantly here in Zoom messages. You are mute. You are mute. You know, we need to tell people you are muted. You are not mute. Okay, so we also need to have a sense of humor. And corona carelessness can spread when we are impatient, when we think we know better, when we make assumptions, or when we jump to conclusions. Let us stop the spread of corona carelessness. Let us use our eyes first to understand before we speak. And number four, let us perk up our ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. As a recipient, ask if what is said is of the Lord. Not everything that is said to us is godly or beneficial to us. Some can really hurt us. We need to reject lies, but we need to embrace truths. As a giver, Ask the Lord for godly counsel to bring to others. Number five, the, the tongue has the power of life and death. The tongue of the godly, the wise, and a friend adds value to another. Let's pray that God will grant us wisdom, restraint, and skill like a skillful surgeon or craftsman when we use this powerful instrument of our tongue. Number six, right words at the right time. It's like a custom-made jewellery. It fits nicely and it adds value. Number seven, be an oasis of life, refreshing and healing. In conclusion, I would like to invite you to sing a prayer together with me. I believe you and I, we want to be instrument of God's life. So let us ask the Lord to make us His instrument Let's ask God to tune us His instrument. Yes, Lord. Lord, make me an instrument, an instrument of your life. I lift up my voice in your name. Lord, make me an instrument, an instrument of your life. I lift up my voice in your name. Lord, tune me your instrument, your instrument of your life. I lift up my voice in your name. Lord, tune me an instrument, an instrument of your life. I lift up my voice in your name. Let us pray. Father God, right now, I pray for healing for those who have been hurt by words that have been carelessly spoken to them. Some have been carrying it for so long. Today, God, we pray for healing in this area. First of all, Lord, we pray for cleansing. Lord, we pray for the removal, God, of every root of bitterness that have taken place in the hearts of your people who have been hurt by words spoken into their spirits. Lord, let this poison, let this root of bitterness be removed even right now as we pray. Lord Jesus, we come to you as the Good Shepherd. Lord, cause your healing balm to begin to touch, oh God, the hearts of your people who have been hurt, God. Let healing begin to take place. 
And Lord, we pray also for healing of relationship as a result of words that has been spoken to each other without restraint. Let restoration of relationship take place, Lord, in our families. Let it take place in our workplace. Let it take place, Lord, in our schools. And let it take place in the church. Let relationships be mended. Let restoration take place. Holy Spirit, we pray that you will cause such a spirit of liberty, such a, such a spirit of grace and freedom to flow in the tabernacle of David, that there will be a culture of openness and encouragement to share and to build each other's life and ultimately to build up the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, tune, tune our ears, open our eyes. Lord, we yield our lips to you. Tune us, Lord, to be instruments of your life. Use each and every one of us, Lord, to be an oasis to the thirsty, to the hungry, to the weary, to the discouraged, and those who need a touch from God. River of God, flow out through me and shed your life abundantly. River of God, so full and free, come fill your church with glory river of god flow out through me and shed your life abundantly river of god so full and free Come fill your church with glory. Yes, river of God, river of God, flow out through us and shed your life abundantly. to invite you to raise your hand even as I give you the benediction. May your heart be a water course in the hand of God where He can direct and flow through. May your life be like an oasis that can thrive even in the challenging situations and difficult seasons of life. May you be an oasis of God's life to your family and the people that you come in contact with. The Lord bless you with a wonderful week ahead.